Is mindfulness a form of meditation? Well, yes and no. Many people use the terms mindfulness and meditation together, mindfulness meditation. And sometimes they are used interchangeably. Let's, let's just see what they are. Mindfulness is the ability to focus on the present moment, whatever is there. So it could be sensations around you, how warm the room is, the brightness. It could be your breathing. It could be your thoughts as well. You don't get engaged in the thoughts. You just notice them. Meditation to me is the ability to quiet your mind. So you're not focusing even on things outside of you. You just focus either internally, again, in the present, but on your breathing or on a flame, you narrow your focus to a very small area in the present moment and just allow your mind to quiet over time, with time. The, the self-talk is often called monkey mind, and it's about learning to quiet that over time. My take is that meditation is a form of mindfulness, but there are many other types of mindfulness. Uh, the first thing for me that comes to me is when I dance, I am mindful. I, I am present with my partner, with the music, and I have to be in that instant to be able to choreograph and lead in the moment. I can't be thinking or analyzing stuff. I've got to be in that moment. When I am facilitating uh, a group, when I'm leading a group, I am generally very mindful. I'm not thinking about what I should do. I've prepared, I've planned and such, but then I sense into the group where they are. I sense how they're responding. I'm very present with them and I allow my intuition, which comes partly from my preparation, to tell me when I have to change what I do. I get a feeling of we're not where we need to be. And so I, I just shift what I'm doing very intuitively to adapt to who's there. But in when I'm doing that, I have to be very present, very mindful. Uh, you know, runners often talk of being on a runner's high, that they get in that state where it's just uh, almost a Zen state of they're just in the rhythm of the running. Now, there's an argument that could be made that those are moving meditations. You can have a walking meditation where you're uh, very present, very in the moment of what's happening around you. Uh, but I think that there is a subtle difference. There are other forms of mindfulness than just meditation, even though the two are used often together and interchangeably. You know, some may say potato, potato, but I think there's a subtle difference. For me, the journey is meditation is a tool to deepen your muscle of being able to be mindful, to be able to be present. And as you do that, to, to me, what that allows you to do is to be more mindful, to be more present in what happens. So for example, if there are things that upset you or trigger you, your ability to be mindful, which can be strengthened with meditation, allows you to respond rather than react. So instead of it triggering and you getting upset, all of a sudden you, you just notice that and you go, hmm, interesting. And you can uh, allow yourself to respond much more effectively. Now, one of the things that, that both mindfulness and uh, <clears throat> meditation do is they help to catalyze a lot of healing chemicals in your body. When you're not practicing mindfulness, 
what happens is quite often you're reacting to things. There's a lot of worry. There's a lot of anxiety. You can create the stress response. And when you do that, you catalyze about 1,430 hormonal changes that poison your body, that poison your system. You also shut down your brain. You're not as resourceful. Think about it with a fight or flight response. If a saber toothed tiger came down back in the old days, you didn't need to sit down and do a cost benefit analysis. You either fought or you ran. You, it was fight or flight. You know, that, that's the thing. It happened in that instant. Well, today, when that um, stress response happens, there's no tire. It, the saber toothed tiger, it's just worry, it's just anxiety that's in your head. And so these chemicals are constantly pumping through, uh, poisoning your system. And, and uh, really holding you back from doing things effectively and, and also from being present. I believe we get addicted to these chemicals and we get hooked on and need them to have that hit to be in that, that moment. So what, what you have to think about is what mindfulness does is it enables you to stop that response so you can be present so you're not poisoning these chemicals through your body and you also get your brain back so that you're in when you're not reacting with a stress response which is producing all the toxins you're noticing and then you can choose to respond mindfully in terms of what's the most appropriate response as opposed to reacting without having any control. I think that this, that's part of the huge, huge value of this. That's why mindfulness has been shown to you know, increase creativity, increase productivity, all sorts of things, make teams work better because people are able to be much more responsive instead of re active. So in terms of mindfulness, one of the great tools, one of the great resources for building your mindfulness is to practice meditation. And it is a practice. It will take time because we're used to the thoughts coming in. At first, it may be a struggle just to sit and meditate for a couple of minutes. But with practice, you can get to where you'll be able to sit for five minutes, then 10 minutes, then 15, then 20, and just be present. And that ability will influence your mindfulness in the world. One thing that I know, and I don't have any, you know, can't show why this happens in, in direct correlation, but when I meditate regularly, life just goes more smoothly. When I don't, when I go off my practice, more caca happens, things go out of control and I'm reacting and all this sort of stuff. So it, it, I can see in black and white that effect in my life. And I've seen that in others as well, in, in my clients who've started practicing. Meditation is a phenomenal way to build your mindfulness muscle, which allows you to be more mindful in everything that you do, to be more present. And so the two really do work well, hand in hand. Now, if you want to explore mindfulness, uh, I do have, ever since the pandemic, the, my Mindfulness 101 program I've made available for free because so many people need these resources right now. So all you have to do to get access to that is go to saynotostress.com and you can get full access to the full program uh, to dive in in your journey of mindfulness and allow yourself to bring it from the mountaintop into everyday life. Have fun with it.